So in the previous lesson, we found a way to do more advanced organization of our map markers. So now that we know how to dynamically find and remove markers, we need to be able to display several of them. And the problem with that is, is once you have several markers in a small area, they can overlap onto each other. But we can fix this problem with clustering. So in our main script file, we have a loop that adds markers to random points on the page. We have a base lat and long, but then we add a random number onto that to randomize its location. For each loop, we add two markers, and we do that 40 times. So we have 80 markers onto the page. And as you can see at the zoom level, there's a couple of places where markers are overlapping onto each other. And that makes some of these markers unclickable. So right here, I can click on this one, but when I want to get to the blue can behind it, it's a little more difficult to do so. And then as I zoom further out, the markers bunch up even more together. And if I zoom out even more, most of them are absolutely unclickable. So we can solve this issue by setting marker clustering. So clustering doesn't come into Google Maps by default. You actually have to add an extra library. So this is an example of a cluster. We can see that we have these little circles that have these numbers in the center of them. And they represent how many markers are inside of that cluster. So if we click on this four, when we zoom in, we get these three right here. But then we also have more markers right here for this two cluster. And when we click in, we see those two. And then as we zoom out, when the markers get closer, they cluster in. So this is a much easier way of displaying markers onto the page. To set up clustering within Google Maps, you actually have to download a separate library because it doesn't come by default. So at this Google Code website, the library is called Google Maps Utility Library V3. Now there's a ton of useful libraries listed here, such as the day-night overlay, but we're only interested in this marker cluster. So we can click down here on the released versions. We can click on 102, go to source, and then right here we have marker cluster and the compiled version as well. Since we're just going to be working in a development environment, I'm going to take the uncompiled version. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to add it to our plunker. I'm going to call it markerclusterer.js and then I'm going to paste in that code. And in my index.html file, I'm going to add it right below my Google Maps reference. So now that we have this reference, let's go into our Mapster library and we'll start setting up for our cluster. And a cluster is an object that's constructed through a constructor function, just like everything that we've worked with so far. And we're going to add this marker cluster as a property to our Mapster library. And the reason why we're going to set it as a property is because we need to access it within functions inside of the library. So we'll add it on as a property. And so we initialize it by saying new marker clusterer. And you can see that we don't actually say google.maps.markerclusterer. And this is because since it's in a separate library, it's not attached to the Google Maps namespace. So this constructor function will take the map that we're working with. It'll take in any of the markers that we want to cluster. And in this case, we don't have anything, so we'll pass through an empty array. So to get these markers to cluster up, we need to add them on to the clusterer. So when we're adding markers down in our add marker function, we can tap into the marker clusterer. So the marker clusterer has an add marker function, and we just need to pass through the marker to get it onto the cluster. And you can see right here that we already have these clusters. We have these two stray markers right here, but that's because they don't overlap onto anything, so they don't need to be clustered. But as we zoom out, they get sucked into the cluster. We have this marker right up here, and if we zoom further out, it gets sucked into the cluster as well. And now you notice that the cluster has actually changed colors. And that's because when clusters get more dense, you can change what color they are. And when we zoom out, we get even fewer clusters, and then when we get to the top, we see the 81 total markers we have. And then if we click on the cluster, we get centered of all the smaller clusters in the area. And we can click on those clusters from there as well. So now you might be wondering how you control the color of the clusters. And just as we've passed through options to a marker, we can pass through options to the marker cluster. So up in our constructor function, we can actually pass through an options. But currently we don't have any options being set for the marker cluster. So where we do have our map options being set in our map options JS file, we can set a property to set the cluster options. If we just pass through ops.cluster, 
we can then customize our cluster. And then what we also can do too is we can check to see if we're using a cluster in the first place. If there's a property for the cluster, then we'll initialize the cluster library. If not, then we need to go down here to where we're adding our markers, and we need to also check for it down here as well. So in this case, we haven't set any options for our marker cluster yet, so it's going about it as it's not there. So to change that, we'll go into Map Options, and then down here we'll set one for Cluster. And then automatically we can see that it's starting to cluster up. And if we want to set further options for our cluster, we can then create this Options object. And within Options, we're going to want to set the styles. And the styles are an array of objects. And the reason why it's an array is because it's set up for the different densities. We saw the clusters change color as we zoomed higher up onto the map. And there's three types of densities that we're going to be dealing with. There's small, medium, and large. So the first object represents the small density, the second object the medium density, and the third one the large density. And right now we're not seeing any styles because we're setting the styles to blank. If we were to remove them, we see the small blue density cluster. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to switch the small cluster density from being blue to an orange. So the first property we're putting into our style object is called URL. And this is similar to the icon property we deal with with markers. And I've just hot linked over to a marker cluster, and that's M2. And we're not seeing anything, and that's because we need to set a height and a width. And once we have a height and a width set, we can see that we have our marker cluster. And one thing we actually can do too is change the text color. And as ugly as it is, we were able to change it to a red. And we also can change the text size. So by providing this first object literal, we're able to set the styles for setting the small density. And if we provide another object literal, we'll set it for the medium density. So we'll paste the object literal over, and then at the URL, we'll change this to M1. And we'll get rid of the text color and the text size for this one. So now we'll zoom out, and we can see when we get to our medium density that our marker changed to our blue. And the smaller densities still have the orange color. So it's pretty easy to go through and set styles for our marker cluster. But one thing we need to be aware of is now that we're using a cluster, removing our markers is a bit different. So down at the bottom of our main script file, I'm going to remove the marker with the ID of 2. And you can see that right now we have multiple IDs of 2. And anything that's the green rice marker should actually be removed from our map. But currently that's not happening. So right now we can console.log the marker that we're passing through the callback to make sure that we're actually evaluating that. And we can see in the console that we have all these markers that are the green rice markers. So to make sure we're evaluating correctly, we'll do an if statement inside the remove by. And if the marker ID is equal to 2, then we'll console.log that marker. And we can see here in the console that we get all these markers back. So if we're getting these markers, why aren't they removing from the map? So we'll go into our mapster library, and we'll check our remove by function. And we can see that we're calling set map to null. But now that we're using a marker cluster, we actually need to call something different. So first we need to check to see if we're actually using a marker cluster. So if we don't have a marker cluster, we just want to set the map to null. But if we do have a marker cluster, we're going to call another function. We're going to call this dot marker cluster. And we're going to call remove marker, and we're going to pass through the marker. But in this case, it's not working, and that's because of the value of the this keyword. So we'll set a variable self to this, and we'll change all of this references to self. So now that we're checking for our map cluster, we can see that we don't get any of those green rice markers onto the map. So if you're using a marker cluster, you have to remove it from the cluster to get it off the map. And if you're not using it, you can just call the set map function and set that to null. So far, we've been able to add these functions onto this library and then just call them in this main script file. And since we know how this library is made, it's easy for us to tap into this API. But we might want to make it a bit easier for the everyday user to use it. And usually things like that are written as jQuery plugins and jQuery widgets. So in the next lesson, we'll take this map library and we'll implement a jQuery widget with it.